Hey, hey, this is Shawnee with Shifting Mindsets with Shawnee Podcast. We are in season four of Victory Over Trauma. And today's episode is the spirit of forgiveness. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. And if you run it back and look at all of my podcast seasons, you will notice that the pattern is that I'm talking about forgiveness on every single season. Why? Because I found that um, as a mental health clinician and then just as a human being walking this earth, that many people are walking around with a lot of hurt and pain and the burdens from them because they refuse to forgive. And I don't think people understand just the power of forgiveness. So I definitely want to connect with those believers and those who are non-believers on, you know, coming into agreement with forgiveness over your life because in life we make decisions, right? We make poor decisions. We're not always perfect. And even though the offense that was done towards us from another person um, could be great, right? And it should come with great consequences. We shouldn't have to suffer from those consequences. And we suffer from those consequences when we come into agreement with unforgiveness, right? We feel like, oh, well, this person doesn't deserve for me to forgive them. But as you've heard countless times before, the forgiveness is never for them, it's for you. It's so that you can take them out of prison in your mind and set them free. So then that way you can feel free to roam and explore other things in life. Because if you're keeping them as a prisoner in your mind because of unforgiveness, you're a guard always on watch. Always making sure that that person doesn't escape. And I think we need to really walk into total freedom in all aspects of our life. And it's not just financial freedom we need, but we need to be spiritually free from the things that have kept us bound, which unforgiveness does because we know that that comes up against how God tells us to operate in this life. And we know that unforgiveness creates unforgiveness um, for the things that we need God to give it, forgive us for. In Matthew eighteen twenty two, it says, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Listen. The seven biblically represents completion, perfection. In our last episode, we talked about creation. So what are you creating when you come into a place of forgiveness? You're creating joy, peace, soundness, you know, oneness, unity with God and his uh, path for your life. There's just so many different things that forgiveness brings about. Um, Forgiveness in our personal and professional lives um, is necessary. You know, it's just not our personal lives, but think about the people that have hurt you internally, right? Through the jobs that you've worked, the relationships that you've been in, the friendships that you've had, the finances, and it's necessary to, to, to break down the mentality of forgiveness so that you can come into agreement with it. And I'd say come into agreement with it quickly. I know exactly what it looks like to have unforgiveness in my heart and to deal with that for years and the damage that it does over time. And I also am a recipient of God's love, right? There's another podcast episode that we talk about with that. And I have been able to forgive quickly. And the way that the burden drops off of you, it's like God restores you so quickly that it doesn't have a chance to attach itself to your DNA and where you have to recover from it for a significant amount of time. You don't feel the effects of unforgiveness when you come into agreement with God's word to forgive quickly. To truly forgive, you are intentionally deciding to release the following things towards yourself and others, such as resentment, right? You're not playing the game of blaming that person over and over again, because we know that when you start doing that, you're triggered and you start to um, create an uncomfortable environment for yourself in the moment you're also choosing to let go of bitterness anger and seeking revenge and do you know how many times in my mind when I had unforgiveness that I started thinking about all of the things that I can do to get back at another person because I had um, not forgiven them that takes a toll on you and do you know how the brain likes to create and it can go down this full-blown rabbit hole before you know it you have almost committed murder Right. In your mind, because you've allowed yourself to get so deeply involved in the dark things, because that's what unforgiveness does. It puts you in a very dark space. And before you know it, you're thinking dark thoughts and then you have to snap out of it because it gets that dark that you you are scared. You're scared of it. So why not even take yourself down that rabbit hole? When I look at the word forgiveness, it sounds like it you're you're going towards something that you're handing something over and you're increasing the quality of your life. That's what forgiveness represents when I look at the word and really break it down. 
and you need to forgive those who have wronged you, right? And that also can be yourself. So a lot of us probably need to go through a series of like self-forgiveness for poor decisions that we made, get guilt that we're still holding on to um, from how things transpired in the past or how things are transpiring now. So I want you to take some time out to just come into agreement that you agree to forgive yourself. And you agree to forgive whoever who has hurt you, that when you think about them, you become triggered, you become angry, you become sad. You have all of these range of emotions that sift through you. Forgive them. And you do not have to just focus on doing it one time. You're going to honestly have to do it over and over and over again. Like I said earlier, Matthew 18, 22. You forgive not seven times, but 77 times. And sometimes you're going to have to forgive 100 times on up to 500 times, depending on how significant the offense was. The benefits of forgiveness, I mean, whew, there's just a plethora of them. Not only are you set free, but what does that freedom look like? It means that you're able to concentrate better, improve your sleep. It allows more mental space for you to focus on desirable life things like topics so, for example, if you have been studying for an exam and you have this unforgiveness hovering over you, you don't have much capacity to be able to focus on studying because you're taking all of this information in, but you haven't dumped it. You haven't dumped anything. So you have to, you know, release all of that old stuff that's been, you know, tormenting you in your mind. You have to get rid of it. So you have to take inventory of the things that you need to let go of. Um, forgiveness also allows your physical health to be improved. You ever experience any chest pains, any sudden aches and pains in your knees and your back? Listen, the body definitely knows how to pick up on what hasn't been dumped. The toxicities, because negative thinking is very toxic to the body. It does not produce the chemicals that your body needs to feel like it's living in a healthy environment for your organs to feel like it's living in a healthy environment. So you ditch all of that when you come into a place of forgiveness. There is such a thing of people dying because of stress. You don't see stress, right? It's something that you feel. It's something that's connected to emotions that have piled up on top of another. And guess what stress can cause to? Failure of organs. And then before you know it, you have an illness or you can have a disease. So yes, Forgiveness runs deep and you should really think about coming into agreement with forgiveness quickly. I'm telling you, when you forgive, you will look, feel and think differently. You will be renewed. When we come into Christ, we start to become renewed. And that's part of a process of coming into Christ. You haven't fully accepted God's calling over your life, fully accepted God for God if you have not forgiven you're still in a state of hesitation and you're trying to be God over your life when you need to allow God to be God over your life because we know that him being over your life is for your good. Okay, there's no questions, if, ands, or buts about that when we know that we follow his purpose and plan for our lives. It's a good thing. So if forgiveness is part of his process, just know that you're coming into agreement with a good thing, even if you don't understand it. This is where you have to walk in total faith. I often get asked the question of how am I supposed to forgive? I know I sound supposed to come into agreement with it, but it doesn't feel like that's enough. And I agree. It's not enough to say I forgive this person. Why? Because when you came into agreement with the unforgiveness, you reflected on the who, what, why, when, how, and where. You did all of that logical thinking that connected you to the unforgiveness. And now it's time for you to do the logical thinking to break up these patterns and come into agreement with healthy forgiveness okay I want to let you in on six different examples of how you can navigate through actually coming into full forgiveness just based on really reprogramming your mind and how you look at forgiveness first and foremost you want to acknowledge exactly how you feel you probably feel disappointed you feel disturbed there's just a lot of different emotions that can come about when you are acknowledging it Number two, understand the facts behind why you feel the way that you do. Don't allow yourself to be so consumed that you're swimming in your feelings that you can't understand logically what's happening. This is why it's so important that you build a relationship with God, because when you build a relationship with God, you build a relationship with the version of you that he desires for you to be operating in on a day to day basis. Managing your emotions is so important because in the Bible, it tells us to um, be angry, but do not sin. 
So God knows that you're going to have anger that pops up, but he's saying don't stand in those emotions. And when you come into agreement with unforgiveness, what are you doing? You are sinning. So you must know and understand exactly how your body typically responds to things, what your triggers are and how to navigate through um, taking those emotions and managing them in a healthy and productive manner. So you definitely have to be mindful about that. Um, understanding the facts behind your emotions. Number three, validate your emotions. <laughs> Nobody ever tells you that, hey, you have to, you can't feel the way that you feel, that you need to go about your business and you need to just let it go. No, if you feel angry in the moment, say, I feel angry and it's okay for me to feel angry because that's the important thing that you need to know. Because if you keep invalidating yourself by focusing in on what happened and not being able to move past it, it's going to be really hard for you to get to the point where you need to be mentally. Number four, notice that when you focus on your emotions, it's a mental thing. Um, and then you have the emotions, right? So there's a belief that you have internally mentally, right? That causes you to get stuck in your emotions. And um, if you focus in on how you're feeling, also the thought behind the feeling, it helps you to find a really good balance between the two to not get stuck and help you to really fully process through things. Number five, understand that if the person that offended you did not apologize to you, it's okay, right? You can apologize to yourself for allowing the situation to impact you in a negative way, for allowing it to consume your world, for allowing it to disrupt how you desire for your life to look. And that's enough closure in itself. I know you're thinking, no, I need an apology from them. I need understanding from them. But most of the time, it's not going to make or break you. It's not going to help things. And all it could do is just hinder you in the long run. But also, it's you placing unrealistic expectations on that person that offended you. And that takes away from you receiving the true healing that you need and fully coming into agreement with forgiveness. Because now you're saying, because this person didn't say sorry to me, they don't deserve of forgiveness from me so then you want to eliminate every single excuse that's going to cause you to sin right because then you'll be in a state of disobedience so just accept you know the situation for what it is but know that you are deserving of sorrow you're deserving of someone um feeling as if they made a mistake and repenting because that's ultimately what it is just like with you when you make decisions and it goes against what god says to do you want to repent. And in order to fully come into repentance and for God to forgive you, you have to have sorrow behind it. You There has to be a burden on the inside of you for this decision that you made that you know was poor. So if that person doesn't feel that, just understand that that's in their right. But it's your right to be able to, you know, accept it for what it is and move forward. Um, if you do have a person that's willing to apologize to you, I mean, just provide them with what you need from them and fully accept the apology. So, for example, if you need change behavior, accept that they've come into agreement to change that behavior, but also set boundaries to not tolerate anything other than change behavior. Because if you need to remove yourself from that environment or, you know, being connected to that person, then you have to make a game plan to do so. But you still want to forgive despite what they decide to do on their end, because at the end of the day, judgment day will come. God's not going to look at you. And say, you know what, this person did this, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a pass. No, he's going to say, well, what did you do when that person did that to you? When they choose to come into agreement with you about something and they didn't follow through with it, how did you respond to that? Did you still walk in forgiveness or did you decide to be petty and hold resentment? And number six, I want you to know that you have to have patience for this entire forgiveness process. You absolutely have to because... You never know the layers of discomfort that came along with you having to forgive a situation. And if you can work through forgiving a person that hurt you the least, it will help build your way up to the person that, that hurt you the most. But at the end of the day, as soon as you're listening to this podcast, jump into it immediately and assess the situation to see who do you need to forgive right now. And if you need to forgive yourself, please work on this immediately. Even if you have to say, I'm forgiving myself because um, according to Matthew 22, um, Jesus says to forgive 70 times seven, whatever it is. Okay. 
you have to keep saying that feed that into your spirit because it needs to know it needs to be an automatic thing that you do moving forward there's so much value in forgiving um it means that you get a chance to obtain peace in all areas of your life that were once filled with sorrow i want you to take some time to really reflect and just imagine yourself replacing many small pieces of your chaos with peace how does the sound of that make you feel when you just visualize that in your mind it may feel like it's impossible but at first but as you chip away at one problem at a time you will feel lighter lighter and lighter and just know that you'll no longer be heavy carrying a heavy weight on your back um, I'm gonna give you three different exercises that you can do you know to really work through forgiveness because I'm a firm believer that I can tell you one thing but I need to be able to give you the tools and the direction on how to implement actionable steps. Okay, so strategy is key when it comes to forgiveness. Number one, leave room for growth and building healthy relationships from those you are choosing to forgive. So you can do that immediately. Okay, number two. Um, create newer experiences in your life with yourself and other people, the people that you love. Because when you're communing with those people that are loyal, that are healthy dynamics, that are supportive, that bring you peace, it makes it easier for you to come into agreement with forgiveness for those other people, especially if they're not around you. And number three, walk in your life's purpose. What has God called you to do, right? Whatever it is he's called you to do, regarding utilizing your gifts, entrepreneurship, creating, do that and knock out any lack of motivation that you may have. Because once you start coming into forgiveness, right, it's going to free up space and those motivational levels will come. But you have to be willing to take action and not just sit there and be in your mind all day. OK, so make a vow to God that you will forgive any and everyone who have ever wronged you during your lifetime. And I would say take this even further to forgiving all of those that have impacted your the generations that came before you. All of the people, your ancestors that did not have the, the strength, did not have the wisdom to be able to forgive. Forgive on their behalf as well, because I know that there's power in that. You know, think about what's happening in your DNA and the things that you'll pass down to your, your children and generations after, because now you've created a healthy generational pattern. That's going to carry, carry them and also bring more peace, good health, wealth, all kind of things. OK, so that is my time with you all. I pray that you are all walking in total and complete forgiveness, right? Because forgiveness is freedom. And I pray that this message blesses you and that, um, you know, if there's somebody that's on your heart when you're listening to this podcast, go ahead and send it over to them because we want everybody to be set free. From the mental torment of unforgiveness. I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you on the next episode.